So, you're stuck in your SR range and you want to get out. Fair enough, we'll help you to do just that. Pure choice across all SRs is definitely what will help you to climb the most. So for that reason, today we're going to look at the top 6 heroes to rank up fast with, Plat and Below Edition. My name is Nathan, and welcome to Blizzard Guides. So, no, not necessarily low SR, but what I mean by low SR is essentially where the pro meta no longer applies. There's a certain point where you have to just really play specific team comps and above, so I would probably gauge that around low diamond to high plat, so this guide is aimed at those of you who are mid plat and below. The way this is going to work is I'm going to go over two heroes for each category at a total of six, and for those of you who might say, well, there's four categories, typically you want to look at it as three categories, DPS, tank, and heals. DPS means damage per second, which would just be the attack and defense categories combined. And also one last thing, I know that some people are going to tell me in the comments down below that well you shouldn't just play one hero and that you should flex for your team. And while yes that is true and yes it is true that there are certain situations that you would want to play for your team or for the map, that doesn't mean that you can't main a specific hero and just play that hero every given opportunity. You get to decide what you're willing to flex to, not your team. So sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes you can just be firm about what you're going to play and just run with it. Anyway I digress, I'm going to go in the order of DPS tank and then support and that's just not in any particular order I just picked it like that because that's how I wrote the script I guess I don't know it doesn't really matter it's not very important and also if you think that any of these heroes don't deserve to be on the list or you think that you have a better suggestion let me know in the comments down below I'd really love to hear your guys' feedback anyway sorry for this long-winded intro let's get right into this list so the first DPS and at number 6 we have the Rocket Queen herself, Farah. Farah is one of those interesting heroes. Without any proper counters she can absolutely dominate matches. She's relatively easy to play and her projectiles are very forgiving and she has her own line of protection being in the sky and all. Farah does a devastating 120 damage per hit. With 6 shots in the chamber she can be really impactful with low mechanical cost. This hero is one for those of you who don't have pin perfect aim but are better at positioning and maybe managing your resources. The 3 tips I can give you when playing Farah are as follows. First, be careful to not overextend or play in closed areas. You have to be always mindful of where you are headed, so try not to get into any cramped hallways since you'll actually be at a huge disadvantage because you won't be up in the air and a Farah on the ground is just super easy to kill. You always want to be in open areas and on high ground especially. And in the event that you do have to go into a closed area, maybe to just grab a health pack or maybe finish off a low health support, always plan your escape route. Think critically about it. If the hallway only has one exit that leads to the enemy team, maybe it's not best to go into that tight, cramped area. Or perhaps if there is an easy exit, you can probably get away with going into the hallway. It's all just about being very careful about choosing your positioning and planning your escape. And secondly, be very careful when you ult, because when you do, you'll be stationary in the air. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Just try and surprise the enemy team from behind, and try and do it in a spot that they will have trouble shooting at you. So maybe behind a wall, or just above them, or somewhere like behind them. Don't give them time to react. Remember that you don't have to be right next to the enemy team, your rocket volley is actually pretty quick. You don't have to go for big huge 6 man kills, just getting 2-3 to three guaranteed kills is better than none and just dying. And lastly just learn to feather your hover jets. Basically just get used to tapping the jump button so that you actually hover in the air, rather than holding it all down in one go. If you do this properly, you'll actually be able to fly forever. All it takes is just periodically pressing the jump button, so aiming for 50% of the time used and 50% of the time not. So if you're holding jump for half a second while in the air, wait for another half a second until you press the jump button again. It's an extremely useful tool to have in your kit and it will make playing Farah significantly easier. Farah overall is a really strong pick, especially at lower elos where your biggest counter, hitscan players, might not have the best aim in the world to be able to pick you off. For our second DPS at number 5 we have Reaper. Now some people might question this one and I totally understand where you're coming from but I have a good reason. Reaper is a hero that doesn't thrive at top levels of play where everyone is organized. However at elos where teams aren't necessarily going to be as organized as something like an overwatch league team, you can seriously pack a punch with Reaper. Reaper plays best in two scenarios, one against triple or quad tank and two against unorganized teams. And well, yeah, you're pretty much going to always find very unorganized teams in matchmaking, regardless of what SR you play at. Reaper's shotguns can do lethal damage in just a single shot, so learning how to position yourself, which isn't very difficult, and just learning how to get 2-3 to three critical shots out of your shotguns, which also isn't very difficult, will prop your gameplay up to the next level. So first, positioning. When positioning as Reaper, you really have to be careful about when and where you use your shadow step to move around. I would rarely, rarely ever use it if I were you. The only situations, honestly, where you do want to use it are either when you're coming back from spawn or just trying to get behind enemy lines or maybe trying to get on high 
underground. Obviously, I don't need to explain how to get back from spawn, but the others I do. So when you're trying to get behind the enemy lines, you're usually going to want to go further back than you actually would expect to do so. You're going to be vulnerable for a solid moment and you won't be able to move. So when you shade step to a new location, you really have to plan it out and figure out where the enemy team is going to be looking and where they're standing. If you can't see where you're going to teleport to, it just might be best not to do so. So if you're unsure whether or not there are enemies there, just be safe and don't do it. And if you're going to go for high ground, the same thing applies, just make sure that there aren't enemies looking there. So now that you've put yourself into a position that lets you get closer to the enemy safely, how do you engage? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The best reaper playstyle at any elo is just hunting and pouncing. You really shouldn't be seen until the moment that you come into contact with the enemy team, shotguns blazing. You won't give the enemies time to react, and if you can land two to three shots from your magazine, you'll actually be able to sweep up kills. Your goal is to get one target, so before you actually pounce on the enemy, decide who you're going to kill, get that kill, and if you aren't on low health, go and kill the nearest enemy. Repeat this until you are actually at low health, and just use Wraith to get out, and voila, you've won the fight for your team. Hunting and pouncing is the most effective way to engage the fight, so once you're actually deep into the fight, your job is relatively simple, because at close range, Reaper is really easy to pull off. And also a quick tip for when you ult, don't ever try and go for a 6-man Reaper ult by yourself, just ult whenever your team is actually fighting with the enemy. So even if two of your teammates are fighting four of the enemy, it might still be a good time to ult. Just don't ult by yourself, that's the biggest mistake you could make. And now off to tanks. So the tanks are going to be a perfect blend for those of you support players that are looking to get into DPS and DPS players that are looking to get into something a bit more refreshing and less critical of you landing your shots. The first tank we're going to look at is number 4, Reinhardt. Reinhardt is a super powerful and pretty easy hero to learn. Reinhardt sporting his rocket hammer of justice is able to swing and toss enemies around with ease. His giant barrier field can negate up to 2000 damage points the enemy throws at you. So while a hero like Roadhog might do a lot of damage to move the enemy around, Reinhardt's focus isn't on applying damage as much as it is protecting and creating space for your team. So since Rein is a more traditional tank and fits more into the very classic style of tank toolkit, this will be a very good first tank to learn and just a very good tank to keep in your pocket. As of right now, your biggest counter will be Sombra and Junkrat, so just playing effectively, you won't actually encounter too many issues. So first, I'm just going to give you the basic spiel of playing Rein, and then I will tell you more specific issues about what you're going to counter with Rein and how to mitigate those things. So firstly, you really want to focus on learning when to go and brawl on point and when to play passively and hold your shield up. The easiest way to remember is if your team is taking heavy damage and might not be competing to a fight, so if they're playing somewhat passively and either healing or waiting for abilities to recharge, you're probably going to want to just hold your shield. And when both teams are brawling on point, you definitely want to be up in the fight swinging your hammer in the front lines, building ult and doing damage. And while your rocket hammer might not have the burst potential of something like Junkrat, you're really going to want to just put pressure on the enemy team, which is more than enough for them to either back up or just get finished off by your damage dealers. Reinhardt is focused on creating space for his team, so use this to your advantage. Play forward, play aggressive, and protect when necessary. And for your counters, two things that are just going to be the biggest issue, especially in Season 9, are Junkrats and Sombras. Junkrat is absolutely going to burn your shield down and extremely quickly at that. So quite simply, just hold your shield whenever lethal damage is coming in, and if the damage might not necessarily be something that's going to wipe out your team or get a pick, then you don't necessarily need to hold your shield. So if the Junkrat spam is, you know, off target, might not be hitting your team, you can put your shield down and just let it recharge. But if there is a lot of damage coming in, you want to hold your shield up. And for Sombra, unfortunate as it is, there really isn't much that you can do. If Sombra plays smart, she'll always be out of range for you and always in range for a hack. You really have to rely on your team killing her and that can be pretty difficult at times. So playing aggressively is your really only option in truth because playing passively with shield will only cause you to lose your shield and it'll just leave your team vulnerable. Our next tank at number 3 is Roadhog. Hog is an extremely forgiving hero. The 300 HP take a breather with the 50% damage reduction allows you to take huge blows at the cost of just giving some enemy ult charge. Hog is a bit more mechanically demanding than some of the other heroes on this list, so you'll really need to get your hooks down and flicks down. But even with a hook accuracy of like 40% or something, you'll still be able to be extremely effective. Roadhog can pretty much guarantee insta picks really quickly and easily. Ideally, you want to play on point with your team, throwing damage in as often as possible 
picking off enemies that are out of position. Some tips that will improve your effectiveness are as follows. First, just try and catch enemies off guard with your hook. So if both teams are brawling on point, try and hook enemies that are standing still or aren't looking at you. This won't give them enough time to react, allowing you to more easily land your hook and secure the kill. And when you hook, just remain calm, aim slightly in front of where you think the enemy will be. So if they're walking in a line perpendicular to you, hook slightly in front of their path of travel. And secondly, despite the crazy amounts of damage that you output, you still aren't a replacement for your DPS. Hog is still a tank, so you have to play very forward and in front of your team, creating safe space behind you that your DPS can utilize to be able to grab better positioning. Hog has a weird dual nature of DPSing and tanking when used properly, but if you get it down and get used to the weird feeling of it, you can really have a huge impact in your games and absolutely dominate the front lines. Hog is a tank that really thrives in the front lines and on points, so make sure that you use that to your advantage. And for the last, but very much certainly not the least category, support. Starting the first support off at number two is Moira. If you're in a elo like bronze, silver, or gold, you're probably already well aware of the haunting damage that Moira can output. Her healing and damage potential is absolutely astounding, and against unorganized and chaotic teams, Moira absolutely wrecks. And luckily for you guys, Moira isn't a very hard hero to learn. Her mechanics and positioning are more forgiving than a support like Zen or Ana. When you play Moira, you want to always be healing first, damaging second. The main worries that you have when playing Moira are relatively simple, but something that requires a lot of balance and preparation. Firstly, you have to be very mindful of your healing meter. If your team isn't taking lethal damage, you're safe doing damage and rebuilding that healing meter. But if your team is taking heavy damage, healing is the priority. In an actually very similar situation to Reinhardt, you really need to learn when and where you need to switch from healing to damage. And it's actually very similar for your healing and damage orbs. If your team isn't taking lethal damage, you can safely throw a damage orb. And if your team is taking heavy damage, you can safely throw your healing orb. Orb. It's pretty self-explanatory. Like with all supports and tanks, good decision making and game sense will separate the good from the bad. Another question that a lot of Moira players have is when to use their ultimate, and again, luckily for you, it's not too hard to get down. Primarily, you want to be healing when you use your ult and doing damage second. Basically, you want to line yourself up so that the line of sight through your ally goes through them and into an enemy, basically and effectively healing and doing damage at the same time. Doing so will spit out insane amounts of damage and insane amounts of healing. Coalescence also charges really fast, so you can get away with using it almost every fight. Use it whenever you engage into a fight with your team and use it also to just cover for your healing if you run out of healing juice. And lastly, when to fade. Fading is very useful and very powerful for more your players. Basic fade uses would include fading in to close that distance off between a low health enemy target and you, and then using fade to retreat from a lost fight. Some more advanced uses would be dodging ultimates with fade. You can escape earth shatters, graviton surges, rip tires, high noons, pulse bombs, and a whole host of other ults. Timing is key with fading out of the those, but if you learn it and practice it, you'll be practically unkillable. It's actually kind of ridiculous the plays that can be made with Fade. And last but not least, the final hero and support at number one is Zen. Yep, not Mercy. Three tanks. Ah! Ah! Oh! 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 Jeez! Oh, no, don't do that to me, Angela. Zen is a stupidly powerful hero right now, but severely underrated. Definitely a hero that in the right hands can actually burn through enemy lines. He is absolutely the most mechanically demanding hero in this list, so this is actually the hero that you need to practice and learn the most should you decide to main him this season. Zenyana boils down to really two main concepts, Discord and Transcendence. Discord and effectively his damage output are where you're going to get the most value out of Zenyatta. Zenyatta's Discord, when placed properly, can melt through the enemy's front line. You want to put Discord on two classes of targets face slash main tanks and hard to hit mobile heroes. So that's your Pharah's Tracers and Genjis. If you put Discord on the face and main tanks, you essentially shut down the enemy team's front line. So if their team is reliant on their shield and not running flankers, then you want to put Discord on their front line tanks. And if you're getting flanked a lot, you can just put Discord on those flankers and go for the left clicks. Discord is a super powerful tool for Zen's kit, and when placed properly, it can shut down entire teams. And to follow that trend, Zenyatta's primary and alternate fire are really devastating. Zen's right click can melt through enemies. If you land all 5 shots, you do a total of 230 damage not including headshots or discords or power boost. And for his ultimate transcendence, you really just want to hold on to it for 2 scenarios. One, if you're stuck in grav and going to be burst down with your team, pop your transcendence and you'll be able to save your team. Same applies to something like Maze Blizzard. And second, if your tank is super low and you're trying to clutch a fight, so either in overtime or it's a 2v3 or something like that, popping trans is an okay idea given the situation. Your 
judgment is important here, so not all situations are equal, but trans is just essentially a get out of jail free card that lasts 6 seconds. Use it wisely. Personally, when I play Zen, I save trans if the enemy has a dragon blade grab or maybe earth shatter if I know I can play safely in the back end and void it. I use it as a counter ult, rarely as an engagement ult. Using trans defensively is just always smart. And for the last tip with Zen, just play in the back. Don't ever be in the front line of the engagement. Positioning is a huge component of playing Zen properly. So always stay safe in the back line of your team. Anyway, I hope these tips helped you guys out to find perhaps a new main in Season 9. And remember that this isn't the end all be all list. Obviously, there are other heroes that you can play, and if you think that one of these heroes doesn't deserve to be on the list, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any better suggestions, let me know as well. And also, I'd love to hear your ideas for future videos. I'm always listening, reading the comments, and replying down below. So I will definitely see any feedback that you guys have, and I seriously appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and found it useful. Don't forget to leave a like as it really helps us know that you guys are enjoying the content. And don't forget to subscribe as we have a lot of Overwatch League content and tips and tricks videos so that you can be the best Overwatch player that you can be. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, have a nice day, my name is Nathan and this was Blizzard Guides.